Well, praise the Lord, beloved. Last week we had to break into the program because we were running out of time. But we are about to continue that program that was airing last week before we broke in. I pray that the message of Christ and him crucified, the meaning of the new covenant, the message of the cross continues to bless your heart as we continue to bring the word of God to you. Now let's go right into the message where we left off last week. God bless you, beloved. Do you know what God really wants to do? You know what Jesus really wants to do? Speak to me. Listen to me real good, because I know many of you don't understand what I'm saying, but you're going to get it. He wants to live his life through you by you yielding to him. That's when everything you have need of will be met. When all your heart desires will be met. Your heart's desire is not a car. Your heart's desire is not a house. I know you think that. He'll give me the desires of my heart. That's, That's not that kind of desire. the desires of your heart. Living right. The desires of your heart is to live right. Amen. 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 And righteousness come by faith. Amen. Living right. Well, oh, this is so simple, but yet so powerful. Amen. I think sometimes when we preach, we try to get too deep. Oh, God. But this is so powerful. You can live the way he wants you to live yeah. simply by keeping yeah. your faith in what he did at Calvary. Yeah. That's the message of the cross. Now, you know how you can know whether you're living right? Listen to me. If you believe right, you will live right. That's good. That's good. Right. If you believe wrong, you'll live wrong. You're going to be living wrong. And what do I mean by living wrong? You're going to be doing all that stuff you don't want people to know. <laughs> You're doing it. And you know you are. But you don't want nobody to know. You're not living right. You know why you're doing that? Because you're not believing right. When you believe right, you will live right. I heard a preacher say this one time. I want you to turn your Bible to St. John and I'm going to quit here in just a minute. I heard a preacher say something one time that brought so much conviction on me. St. John chapter 17. Oh, right on. I'll never forget this statement that he made. He said, I want to challenge you in your life as a Christian. He said, if it were possible for every Christian to live the way you live, would you want that? <laughs> Think about it. <clears throat> the way you're living right now, would you want every Christian to live that way? No. Come on, somebody. No. Somebody here, talk to me now. Listen to me. No. The way you're living, are you sipping on the side? Do you want every Christian to do that? No. Come on. Are you lying? No. Are you committing adultery? Come on. These are the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. These things we do. Do you want Christians to live that? I say I come under conviction when he said that. You know why? Because <laughs> I wasn't living right. Come on. And when I thought about it, boy, this thing is really giving me a problem. When I thought about it, I said, I wouldn't want everybody living like this. So my life wasn't right. And I come under conviction. But you see, today, come on. I wish every Christian could live like I All right, all right, yeah. You see, and that's not through your effort of mine. Right. It's all because. It's what he has done yes, in me. Yes. You see, I'm not what I was. I'm not talking about when I was a sinner. I'm talking about I'm not what I was 22 years ago. I'm talking about when I first came into the kingdom of God. I'm not that same person. I'm a Christian walking in victory. I'm a Christian walking with a glory now. A righteousness that I did not have because of what Jesus did for me. Now, I want you to look at St. John chapter 17. I'm sorry, St. John chapter 19. And what these are going to be are the very last words that Jesus said. Now, think about it. In Luke, he said, I must be about my father's business. That's his first word. And on the cross, in verse 29, he says, Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled it with, with 
a filled sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost and died. His first words, I must be about my father's business. His last words, it's finished. The way has been made for the people of God to be free. It was done through the life of Jesus Christ. When did he say that? When he died on the cross. Not the resurrection. When he died on the cross, he said it is finished. Every bondage that you have in your life can be made whole. But if the bondage is there and you're struggling with it, it's always going to be there as long as you struggle with it. But when you surrender it to God, when you give up and say, I can't do this, but you did it for me and the work is finished and I put my faith that saints of God, you're going to walk out of that bondage into freedom. Amen. Now the message of the cross has a twofold meaning here. And I'm, but I'm about to quit right here with this. First of all, it's a message of salvation. Secondarily, it's a message of victorious living for the believer. And every one of us that are saved walks it. And every one of us that are not saved in here tonight, you may not fully understand this message in it relates to living right, but you certainly understand that you can be made to live right through what Jesus did. Stand to your feet with me, if you will. Musicians and singers, make your way back, if you will. Praise the Lord. If you're here tonight and you have never accepted Jesus Christ, the presence of the Lord has been here all night to touch your heart, and I know that he has. I have no doubt in my mind about that. You know, I used to think that it all had to do with how you preached, but you know the Holy Spirit moves in the way that he desires to move, and he has touched your heart tonight. If you're here and you are not saved, I want you to hear me tonight. You've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You can do it tonight. You can be free and you can be made to live right through what Jesus did for you at Calvary. It can be done, saints of God. But you have to come to him. You have to come to him for what he has done for you. You cannot do this on your own. You must be born again of the Spirit. You must give him your heart. And when you surrender your heart to him, he fills your heart with himself. And he'll give you a brand new life. I want everybody in here right now to bow your heads. Heavenly Father, you know every person that's in here tonight, whether or not they're born of the Spirit. You know every person in here, whether or not they're full of the Holy Spirit, whether they know you, whether they're born again, or whether they're not. You know them. I'm asking for no, for those, Father, that do not know you, that the conviction power of the Holy Spirit can come upon them and draw them to the bleeding side of Calvary's cross that they might be set free. This is what this effort is all about, Lord. Winning souls and preaching this message of the cross. And so I'm asking that you would touch every believer, every sinner right now in the name of Jesus. And may the Holy Spirit's conviction show them where they are in their life, that they might be made whole. If there's anybody here tonight and you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you may even be here tonight and you had accepted him one time and you may have walked away from the Lord. Tonight, you can make him your Lord and Savior for the first time or another time. But I want to give that opportunity to you tonight that you can accept Jesus Christ. Is there anyone here tonight that say, Brother Carl, I need to get my life right with God. I need to get saved. Is there one here tonight that would raise their hand and say, pray for me. I want to accept Jesus Christ. Is there anyone? 
Is there anyone here you know you've accepted him once before and you're not walking with him right now? You're saying, Brother Carl, I got trouble in my life and I need to make it right with him again. I don't want to close this altar without giving you that opportunity to make it right with him once again. Is there anyone here that would say, Brother Carl, pray for me. I need help. Anyone? Get your hands up, get it high so I can see it. Anyone else? Anyone else? If you're here tonight and you are a Christian and you're not living right the way that the Lord wants you to, you don't want everybody to live like you. You who I'm talking to. You want to make it right before the Lord yourself tonight. Anybody else? Any Christian here? talking to you believers now that you are not living right and you want to make it right with the Lord tonight and you want to do that right now I want to make sure you have opportunity to come would you sing something please your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your in the mighty name of Jesus for the Holy Spirit to reveal to her what she's responding for, the presence of the Holy Spirit to keep her strong and to keep her from failing. Lord, she knows you according to her testimony, but she's failing. Many Christians find themselves here, but Lord, this is the answer. Her faith in what you did at Calvary's cross. Place your faith there and leave it. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now and pray it from the depths of your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, as I stand before you, 
in the name of Jesus, I have failed. I have trusted in my own strength. I repent of trying to live for you in my own efforts. I surrender to the truth that Jesus lived this life for me. I put my faith in what he did at Calvary's cross. And now the Holy Spirit is strengthening me and quickening me and quickening my body to live for you in righteousness. I receive what you did for me. In Jesus' name, the victory is now mine through Christ and him crucified. I have victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand that will praise everybody. Come on, give the Lord a hand have a break. Before we leave, and anybody else there, you're struggling in your life with the Lord. And you need what this young lady come to get. You need it. And we don't want to leave without you getting it. Come on, praise the Lord. God's going to do a miracle here with this lady. This lady, the name is Priscilla. Last Sunday, she was watching our television program. She called, and she gave her heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And she's born again now, and she's believing God to heal her eyes. She's believing God to strengthen her. Will you believe with her? Stretch your hands toward her. Heavenly Father, where's the oil? Where's the oil? Father God, this is your new, brand new child. I'm asking in Jesus' name for the Holy Spirit. As only you're able to do, Father. Heal her eyes. Heal her where she can see that the power of the Holy Ghost cause her eyes to open. Cause her vision to be perfect before you and before these people, Father. We're trusting you for the miraculous right now, Father God. Heal by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Now, Father God, I pray for her. That what she has heard tonight will be her strength. That she will put her faith totally in what you did. Not only for salvation, but to teach her to live right. Show her to live right. Through the victory and power of the cross of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit having freedom to work in her. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody else you need prayer tonight before we close? Saints of God, I want you to think about this now. If you're struggling, you want to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God you don't have to come to me. I can't do it for you. But if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he will do it for you. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. Anybody else need to be up here? I don't know why the Holy Spirit do it like he do it, but he's the only one that knows how to do it. You see, we can think we know what to do. We can think we know how to do it. But he knows exactly what needs to be done. Only he knows that. Praise the Lord. Father, I pray that this young lady faces peer pressure at school, that 
you would give her the boldness of the Holy Ghost. I pray for the power of God to be upon her right now. I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you would move mightily in this young lady. Honor her faith for coming to you, Lord, in what you did at the cross. And as the Holy Spirit began to move in her, the boldness will be there for her. In Jesus' name, I pray that you would move in this young man's life, healed by the power of your spirit, as only you're able to do, Father. In the name of Jesus, help me pray, saints. Help me pray. Help me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the anointing of the Spirit to move in their lives, Father. In the name of Jesus, as only you're able to do, Father God, break down the brokenness of the heart. Accept the brokenness, Father, of their spirit and help them to be strong, standing before you, Father, in humility. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to be upon the both of them right now and answer that need that's represented in their life, Father. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, let the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon this dear woman right now. Move in her as only you're able to do, Father. You and you alone can answer the needs of the heart. You and you alone can reach deep within the recesses of the soul and touch the individual's need. And I pray for the anointing of the Spirit right now to move and to do that which only you're able to do by faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Bless her now, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Lift your hands to the Lord and begin to praise the Lord now. Anybody else, before we quit, we need to pray. We want to come right now. Why don't you come? Anybody else, for whatever need you have represented, God the Holy Spirit, moving up here for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit would move mightily in her life. I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, for the healing virtue to flow from the tip of her head to the soles of her feet. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you touch her. As only you're able to do, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
for, Lord. Tennessee for the lost, Lord. Tennessee for the sick, Lord God. And she will continue, Lord, raising people up, Lord, by her prayers, God, and by her faith in you. And we just give you glory right now, God, that you're going to speak to her, Lord. You're going to start sharing some things with her, Lord. Just have a keen ear and hear what the Spirit is saying to you, Sister Sharon, because God is going to say some things to you in these days to come. He's going to speak his wisdom and his knowledge to you. Just be open to hear what he has to say in the name of Jesus. And go forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, say, stretch your hands toward the Lord. Let's sing it together with him. Let his praise forever be on our lips tonight. Oh, yes, Lord. Glory to God. Your praise ever be on our lips, Lord God. Father, we give you the glory. Father, we give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. For those of you that would like to contact Carl Brown Ministries, you can go to our website at carlbrownministries.org. There you will see all of our ministry information as well as you can view our itinerary to know where our next meetings will be. Also, beloved, you can follow us on Facebook at Carl Brown Ministries. You can dial our toll-free number at 877-381-381. 4226, or you can dial our local number at 225-381-8388. Well, beloved, thank you for taking the time to tune in to Wind of the Spirit, and if you tune in this same time next week, we'll be looking forward to sharing the Word of God with you. God bless you, beloved. We'll see you then. Now I'm clean, fresh and